It's uh, October uh, 10th, 2009, uh, you know, almost uh, seven years after they killed, after Chevron and General Motors killed this program. And, you know, this we haven't been filming much lately, but <laughs> our cars are still running fine. This is one of the rare occasions when we fill the thing up to 100%. And you can see that after it gets to 100%, it goes into this uh, sort of a leveling mode at one kilowatt. We just barely get a one one kilowatt uh, charge, and the the um, excess uh, energy is given off in heat. And you'll see that the ambient temperature is 71 degrees in the battery compartment, and the highest temperature is 77.0. Now that's going up fairly rapidly because the excess energy that's being used to level these batteries, even that little one kilowatt charge that excess energy is actually going into into heat so you you know you really should do this in a much colder ambient temperature you know even now the ambient is rising to 71 so I'm not going to let it go through the entire leveling cycle uh, it can be done though and the reason I let it go to 100 percent today is first of all it's off peak secondly we're going to be driving to the San Fernando Valley which takes a full charge leveling is a, is a very misunderstood process um, see, we can't look down to the cell level to really charge these batteries optimally we'd have to go down to the cell level and look at the little uh, D voltage slash DT time when the voltage goes up to a maximum about 14.6 and then goes down slightly and that's when it's 100 percent fully charged we can't do that with these batteries because we, we are dealing with modules that have um, 10 cells each. So inevitably there's going to be some disparity. Now nickel metal hydride has very, very little compared to lead acid. But some of those cells uh, in each module you know, are going to vary. And the only way that that problem is eliminated, and it only has to be done maybe once every five years, is to bring the thing up to 100% completely full and then trickle charge it uh, under conditions where it can shed the excess energy as heat. If it can't shed the excess energy, then the batteries get damaged. So you can see a couple of things here. We've gone 11.6 miles and we have only 87.3%. Uh, that shows that for the first couple of miles, when it's full, we're actually seeing a lot of self-discharge. So filling it up to 100, what's allegedly 100% is, is really not a good thing to do. Because even if you take off immediately after you're at 100%, you know, we actually lost 3% just to self-discharge. It's recovering slowly. By the time we get to our destination, you know, those two numbers, 86.6 and 12.2, which now add up to 98 point something, those two will add up to more than 100% meaning that we're getting more than one mile for every one percent of charge. The second thing to look at is that we're using 12 kilowatts right now to power this thing at 65 miles an hour. Now that's about what you use, between 12 and 25 kilowatts to go, you know, 65 miles an hour. And that's all it takes to keep an electric car at that speed. You don't realize how many roof penetrations there are until you start looking at these roofs. You know, and they're they're really ugly too and you know every one of them could be a solar system look look at all the roof penetrations on that house there you know, you know there's there's no reason why you couldn't put solar systems on all those roofs and there is a big old building at this point we're 34.2 uh, percent on our on our uh, charge left and we've gone 72.4 72.4 miles which is a little over, uh, let's see, 107, if you add them both together, 107.1. So 172.9 and 34.2, so 107.1. So it's a little bit more than one mile uh, for every 1% of charge, a range of over 107 miles so far. Since up until now, we've been driving about between, about 65, between 60 and 70 miles an hour. Uh, now we're driving, you know, five or eight, and that's, so every one of these cars, you know, as usual, it could be an electric car. There, you know, you see all these, these areas here that have just trees and stuff, 
you know, those could be solar solar systems too. There's nothing stopping you from putting solar in there. All these freeway meridians, and then this area down here that's devoted to trees could also be integrated with solar system. And there's a school over there, and a lot of that playground could be shaded with solar panels. And there's there's a rooftop, you know, and and other rooftops. There's a parapet roof that's unused, you know, and and more freeway meridian. Uh, which is now not even used for trees. Now there, at least we have a tree, so it's using some of the solar power.